On December 9th, 2001, Kathleen, a 48-year-old businesswoman, engineer and philanthropist, was found at the bottom of the curved stairs that lead to her bedroom. Her body was surrounded by blood, pulled around her and splattered up the walls and along the stairway. A call was placed to 911 by her husband Michael Peterson, but by the time the paramedics arrived, she was already dead. 911, where's your emergency? Wait, wait, she's still breathing. What kind of accident? Still in the stairs. Novelist Michael Peterson was charged with her murder and convicted in 2003 to life in prison. In spite of this conviction, unwavering curiosity and debate follow this case. To many people there is no doubt that Michael is guilty of killing his wife. To others, especially who knew the couple, this scenario doesn't seem to make sense. Michael Peterson has been granted an appeal and is currently being released on bail and awaiting retrial. Until then, the facts of the case continue to be a source of passionate debate. Here is Michael's account of the events of December 9, 2001. The couple was sitting beside the pool late that evening drinking wine. Michael reported that Kathleen decided to go to bed and headed inside. After an unknown amount of time, Michael went inside and found his wife bleeding on the floor at the foot of the stairs. She was, according to Michael, still breathing. At 2:40 a.m., Peterson called an emergency line to report that he had just found Kathleen unconscious and suspected that she had fallen down. He maintained that she must have fallen down the stairs after consuming alcohol and Valium. Problems with his account were almost immediately apparent. Paramedics arrived 10 minutes after the call was placed. They found her deceased and stated that there was a large amount of blood and much of it had already dried. Much of the evidence used by the prosecution is visible in this photograph. The blood appears as smears instead of droplets which would imply it was wiped. Bloody paper towels are evident. It was believed that someone had attempted to wipe away some of the blood. You can also observe in this photo that the victim has blood on the soles of her feet which would seem to be impossible if she fell down the stairs head first. Toxicology results show that his wife's blood alcohol content was 0.07% which would be under the legal limit to drive. The autopsy report concluded that a 48-year-old victim sustained a matrix of severe injuries including a fracture of the thyroid neck cartilage and seven lacerations to the top and back of her head consistent with blows from a blunt object and had died from blood loss 90 minutes to 2 hours after sustaining the injuries. The medical examiner concluded that Kathleen had died from lacerations of the scalp caused by homicidal assault. According to this medical examiner, the total of seven lacerations to the top and the back of her head were a result of repeated blows with a light yet rigid weapon. A blow poke which was a gift by Kathleen's sister but wasn't recovered at the scene of the crime. The defense disputed this theory claiming that Kathleen's skull had not been fractured by the blows and nor was her brain damaged which was inconsistent with injuries sustained in a beating death according to their analysis. Late in the trial the defense team produced the missing blow poke that they said had been overlooked in the garage by police investigators. Forensic tests revealed that it had been untouched and unmoved for too long to have been used in the murder. The pattern of blood splatter was a major source of debate during the trial. The defense and prosecution provided contradicting forensic analysis from different sources that argued on the subject of the angle of the stairs, location of the lacerations on Kathleen's skull, and the blood stains. The blood pattern analysis seems consistent with the victim's blood moving up the stairway from a blow to her head while standing below, rather than moving downward with the victim as she fell. The defense maintained that the stairs were narrow and poorly lit, so an accident would have been believable. The prosecution maintained that the victim had lived in the house for over a decade using these stairs to get to her bedroom and had never fallen. She was known to be a very strong and active woman. Those who knew her said they could never picture her being clumsy or drunken. There was also the issue of the bruises found on Kathleen. She had bruises on her arms that were consistent with defensive wounds. While the defense insisted that these were caused by the fall down the stairs, her legs and knees had no marks.
The staircase included a 90 degree turn, a banister, and an old chairlift from the previous owners. The defense argued that all of these contributed to the falling hazard in the unusually dangerous staircase. A fall down the stairs typically creates random injuries all over the body. Kathleen had seven massive blows to the head. It is also hard to imagine how a fall could fracture the cartilage in her throat without a neck fracture being involved. The prosecution cited this as evidence of a blunt force trauma and the body having been moved. The defense argued that the pattern could have been caused by a spray of blood from the victim coughing when the blood covered her mouth. The autopsy revealed only microscopic amounts of blood in the victim's lungs, which is inconsistent with the aspiration that would occur in that scenario. The investigative team found blood in places that would seem impossible based on Michael's accounts of the events. His shorts were entered into evidence as showing drops of blood consistent with the spray, such as you would expect when striking a blow. Blood was also found on the inside of the front door and a drop of blood was found on the porch. Kathleen Peterson would have to have been lying face down to create a shoe imprint presumably matching the defendant's shoe on the back of her sweatpants. That's it for the staircase documentary part 1. Thank you for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. See you again next week. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.